Not only did he refuse to answer questions at the hearing, not only did he refuse to answer questions for the record, but Judge Garland is also one of the few Biden cabinet nominees refusing to take in-person meetings with senators, categorically refusing to take them. Multiple other Biden nominees are taking them. And so I would note to my colleagues on this committee, both sides of the aisle expressed considerable frustration with the Department of Justice that resists efforts of the Senate to engage in oversight. Judge Garland's conduct before this committee and his confirmation gives no reason for comfort in that regard. If he's not willing to answer questions now before he's confirmed, the likelihood of his being willing to answer questions after he was confirmed is only smaller. On the response to the questions for the record, it is difficult for a lawyer to draft answers to this committee that are more of a jump in the lake to the Judiciary Committee than these answers are. They reflect a view that's saying, I don't know, on any policy issue is acceptable to be confirmed as Attorney General. I very much hope that my initial assessment of Judge Garland proves right. From the vote on this committee, it appears likely that his nomination will move forward and that he will be confirmed. But for the Republican colleagues who have expressed concerns about another Holder or another Lynch Department of Justice, I would note that both Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch were much more forthcoming before this committee than Judge Garland. He has not even met the standard, the Holder or Lynch standard, and for this committee, the precedent this committee is set, setting is that a nominee for attorney general can sit before this committee and essentially refuse to answer all questions. Say, I don't know, I don't know, I can't tell you, I don't know. And whichever party is in the majority will vote to confirm that nominee nonetheless. That's a precedent I predict will come back to haunt this committee. And I hope that the votes to confirm him will not prove a mistake. Thank you, Senator. Uh, for the record, Republican members of the committee submitted nearly 850 questions to Merrick Garland after our hearing and the oral questions which were submitted at that time. The senator from uh, Texas, a junior senator, uh, in 38 pages of questions asked 127 questions. Uh, which was his right to do. Uh, Merrick Garland responded, if not to your satisfaction, did respond to all the questions. In terms of his meeting with you, it was my understanding that he offered a Zoom meeting in light of the pandemic situation, but you said that you'd feel more comfortable with a person-to-person -person meeting, and I don't know if that ever occurred. But I would say that he did make an offer to meet with you through Zoom, which unfortunately has become a pretty common part of our lives in public service in light of the pandemic. Senator Whitehouse. For uh, what it's worth, Chairman, the uh, Zoom was good enough for our meeting with between myself and uh, the Attorney General nominee. Only Ted Cruz could escape to the Ritz-Carlton in Cancun while his constituents were freezing to death and somehow managed to prove himself worse over the following weeks. Gotta hand it to the Texas Republican, always there to remind us that what we thought was the floor is never actually the floor. Here Ted Cruz is caught lying in his desperation to find any reason to block Merrick Garland's confirmation as Attorney General. He suggests that Garland didn't agree to meet with him, which is patently untrue. In reality, Garland did offer a Zoom meeting with Ted Cruz, which Cruz denied for some unexplained reason. Apparently, while the rest of the country has been relegated to Zoom meetings because of the pandemic that the Republican Party allowed to explode throughout this country, that's not good enough for Cancun Cruz. After all, why should he be expected to live like the rest of us? Consider too, Ted Cruz just took two international flights in the middle of a pandemic. While the Republican senator would have theoretically met with Garland last week, that was still within the time period that Cruz should have been quarantining in accordance with CDC guidelines, which should last at least 10 days after travel to Mexico, which by the way, is designated as having very high levels of COVID and travel isn't recommended there. But again, when it comes to Ted Cruz, it's rules for thee, but not for me. 
I should mention too that while we're on the very specific subject of Ted Cruz complaining that he didn't get a meeting with Merrick Garland, let's take a look back to 2016, where I seem to remember a certain Republican senator arguing that there was precedent for keeping a ninth Supreme Court seat empty and refusing to hear from the nominee, who just so happened to be Merrick Garland. Oh right. That was Ted Cruz, seemingly A-OK -okay with refusing to take a meeting with Garland because it suited his political agenda not to. He said, quote, You know, I think there will be plenty of time for debate on that issue. There is certainly long historical precedent for a Supreme Court with fewer justices. I would note, just recently, that Justice Breyer observed that the vacancy is not impacting the ability of the court to do its job. That's a debate that we are going to have. Bummer Cruz wasn't so demanding when it came to a meeting with Merrick Garland only a few short years ago. Guess he had a change of heart. Now, as for this claim that Merrick Garland didn't answer questions, that is a lie. He might not have answered every one of Ted Cruz's questions to his full and complete satisfaction, but he answered those 127 questions from Ted Cruz as part of the nearly 850 questions from all senators, which Garland also answered. So to claim that he was avoiding answering questions is a complete and total perversion of reality, which shouldn't be much of a surprise coming from Ted Cruz. Consider too, while he sanctimoniously grandstands about the dangerous precedent started by Merrick Garland Garland for not answering questions that he most certainly did answer, there wasn't a peep out of Ted Cruz when Trump's first attorney general, who after being questioned at a Senate Intelligence Committee hearing on Russian officials colluding with the Trump campaign, either refused to answer the questions or came down with full-blown amnesia. I did not have any private meetings, nor do, do I recall any conversations with any Russian officials at the Mayflower Hotel. I do not have any recollection. I do not remember it. I did not remember that. If I had remembered it, or, or if it actually occurred, which I don't remember that it did. I don't know about these reports. I don't recall it. And it's conceivable that that occurred. I just don't remember it. I still do not recall it. Not to my recollection. I don't have any recollection. I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'd have to rack my brain, but I don't recall it. Don't think I had any direct involvement. So I don't recall that. I cannot uh, say with certainty I did not. I have no recollection of a discussion. I don't recall any such meeting. I don't recall any such conversation. I don't recall it. I have racked my brain and I do not believe so. I don't recall any. I don't recall it. I, I don't recall. I don't recall. I don't not recall. I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. I don't recall. Of, I don't know. I don't recall it. I don't recall that. And uh, are you aware of At this moment, I don't believe so. I don't recall whether that was discussed or not. I don't recall that being discussed. I just don't have a real recall of the meeting. I don't recall. But sure, Ted Cruz is very worried about Merrick Garland, who answered his questions, starting a bad precedent of not answering questions, a subject that he clearly has always been very worried about. Got it. And by the way, while Ted Cruz is clutching his pearls about the qualifications of the former chief judge of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit, a court he served on for over 20 years, remember too that Ted Cruz voted to confirm Betsy DeVos as education secretary despite having no teaching degree or teaching experience or sending any of her kids to public school. He voted to confirm Ben Carson, who had zero government experience and was never even involved in a government agency, now suddenly running the Housing and Urban Development Department. He voted to confirm Rex Tillerson as secretary of state despite having zero diplomatic experience and having actually run a company that violated Russian sanctions as CEO of ExxonMobil. We could go on all day, but the point is that Ted Cruz pretty much precluded himself from complaining about setting a precedent for unqualified nominees when he fell over himself to confirm the least qualified nominees in modern American history. So look, I get that we all gave Ted Cruz a lot of flack for skipping town to go to Cancun while the people of Texas were struggling to survive, but it turns out that he's not of much use when he's actually in this country either. Because at the end of the day, Merrick Garland will be confirmed as Attorney General, and Ted Cruz will only have managed to go on record, proving himself to be even more of a hypocrite than before. While you're here, please check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I take a deep dive into the top stories of the week, and I also interview major players in the world of politics, like Kamala Harris, Adam Schiff, Nancy Pelosi, Pete Buttigieg, Katie Porter, Al Franken, Cory Booker, Jamie Harrison, Mary Trump, and many more. Again, that's No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, available anywhere you listen to podcasts.